Well, now it's time to wait with Anne. There is a long day, it's safe to say. We'll have some fun today on Geek World Radio. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Geek World Radio. So A Good Day to Die Hard is coming out just in time to make it possibly the most awesome Valentine's Day date movie ever. So we're using the opportunity to talk about Die Hard! That's right, one of the best action franchises of all time. And the first Die Hard is like the best action movie ever. Plus, it's the best Christmas movie of all time. Definitely, definitely. So before we get into talking about John McClane and the franchise as a whole, Dave, why don't you tell us a little bit about the starts of the first movie? All right, well, the very first movie, Die Hard, came out in 1988, directed by John McTiernan. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but it's actually based on a book anime. What? Called Nothing Lasts Forever, which I know sounds like a James. James Bond book, but it is not. So, let's talk a little bit about the main character, John McClane. Who is John McClane, and why is he so endearing to us? Good question, anime. Who is John McClane, anyway? Well, John McClane, he's just a cop from New York City, plain old cop in the first movie he had been on the force for 11 years. He doesn't really have much ambition, you know, he's not looking to, to really rise in the ranks, not looking to join the FBI or anything like that. He likes being a cop in New York City. Now, initially, the script had John McClane being a super cop type character, mm -hmm. but apparently John McTiernan wanted to make him more of like an average cop, you know, kind of more of a wisecracking, lovable cop, and that way it would be, you know, a little like more dangerous for him. You're like, is this guy going to make it out of there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so true. And that's part of what makes him so endearing to us that we don't know that we're really following him, wondering him, oh my God, he's walking through broken glass. How is he going to get through that? I couldn't get through that if I was walking on broken glass. Neither could I, anime. Because broken glass is dangerous. Oh, yeah. So in the very first movie, a big part of the plot is the fact that John McClane has been estranged from his wife, Holly. Mm -hmm. And basically the whole thing, the whole setup is that he goes to her Christmas party. She lives in L.A. He lives in New York. So he's in L.A. in the Nakatomi Plaza. And then all of a sudden terrorists take over. And then it's just one man, one cop, no shoes, taking down 12 terrorists, anime. Wow. It's amazing. It's the coolest thing ever. It really has some of the best action sequences of all time and some of the funniest lines. Now, a lot of you might not know this, but way back then, Bruce Willis was just some guy in a sitcom mm -hmm. called Moonlighting. Yeah, he was doing comedy. It's crazy. And that's why no one expected him to be this good. And you know what, anime? Now that I think about it, Bruce Willis, he was doing Moonlighting during the day and shooting Die Hard at night. Does that mean he was Moonlighting? Wow. I he guess really it, was. I guess he really was, wasn't he? He is a true artist. Okay? Life imitates art, imitates life. Oh, yeah. So I think what you were trying to get to with that is that a lot of those great lines were ad-libbed by Bruce Willis because he's that awesome. Yep, and ever since then, they had to keep on adding one-liners throughout the series and allowing Bruce Willis to just do whatever he wanted, which is awesome. Yeah. I'm good with that. He's Bruce Willis. You let him do what he wants. Do whatever you want, Bruce Willis. I have no problem. Even if you want to do North, I have no problem with that. Wear a bunny suit. Yeah. Badass bunny suit. <laughs> Bruce Willis really changed the action hero because he was literally the seventh guy to be offered this role. Wow. Everyone from Arnold Schwarzenegger to Nick Nolte, pretty much everyone big in the 80s was offered this role. Even Burt Reynolds anime. And Frank Sinatra. And Frank Sinatra, exactly. All of them offered it declined, luckily, because it was the rise of one of our favorite action heroes, Bruce Willis. Mm-hmm. So a little more about John McClane. He is a borderline alcoholic. He is pretty much borderline alcoholic in every single one of the movies. He has major problems with authority. He really loves his family, but everything else gets in the way, be it his work or, you know, just his work that's not really his work because he can't really be doing the work because it's not the state that he lives in or because he's suspended or whatever else that, you know, leads or, him into these crazy situations that he's in in every movie. I love the fact that in Die Hard 2, now this is after John, John has actually got his act cleaned up a little bit in Die Hard 2, you know? I mean, he's in, L he's in LA, right? He's back together with Holly. Everything's going great. But even in that, they have to spend the entire movie going, how can the same thing happen to the same guy twice? That's, a, that's sort of the entire franchise. And that's really John McClane in a nutshell. And they kind of talk about that by the fourth film because he's the only guy who can handle these situations. Mm -hmm. He's taking on this throne of like the white knight for yeah. America. Yeah, no one else will do it. Yeah, It's it, gotta be John McClane. Exactly. And he realized that I think in the third one, Die Hard with a Vengeance when he was put in this game. Yeah. And he was like, and, and he was like a, a, like a rat in a maze. 
and he had to do it. With Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, and he had to do math problems and other stuff and, and yeah. solve riddles. Math is hard. It's very hard, especially when you're just a cop who likes to shoot people. Yeah. But you know what? He did it, and he died hard with a vengeance anime. Yeah, he, he does what he does. He never becomes a super cop. Mm -hmm. You know, he just is awesome. Yes. And he's willing to do what it takes to save the day. Though I would say by the uh, last movie, he was the closest to super cop. I mean, he did blow up a helicopter with a car. It's true. Yes, we do it's have to true. say that. But at this point, he's had a lot of practice in these crazy situations that he keeps getting into. That's true. That yeah. is true. Yeah, he would be the president's man up at this point. <laughs> you know, like if Resident Evil 4 happened in real life, mm -hmm. they'd send John McClane. It's so true. Okay, Good because point. he's the guy. He is the guy anime. So let's move on to the next thing. Die Hard movies have a formula. Tell us about that formula, Dave. Well, the formula is very simple. It's been done over and over again since Die Hard. It's one guy in one enclosed space against a bunch of bad guys. And usually that one guy is trying to save a bunch of hostages. Now, in the Die Hard franchise, that one place becomes a little bigger of an enclosed place. Exactly. It does keep on getting bigger, each one. So Die Hard 1... He's one man in a building against a bunch of terrorists. Mm -hmm. Die Hard 2, one man in an airport against a bunch of terrorists. Die Hard 3, one man in a city, New York City, fighting a bunch of bad guys. And the fourth one, Live Free or Die Hard, one man saving America against mm -hmm. cyber terrorists anime. Yeah, and we can only assume that this new one is one man and his son against the world. Yes, and in Russia. Yeah. Russia's pretty big. Europe. It's freaking huge anime. Mm -hmm. Freaking huge. So that is pretty much the formula, and it always gets bigger. So we're only assuming, and I think this is obvious, the sixth one, John McClane saving the world from aliens. Right. Yeah. That's all, that's totally all I gotta aliens. Say. Gotta be aliens, right? That's all I right? gotta say. I, I would see that. I would so see I that. I would totally see that. You would too. You know <laughs> Yeah, it. you would. You know it. So like you said before, these movies are really important, and they inspired a lot of other movies, a lot of clones. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, about some of the movies that they inspired. There's Die Hard on a Boat. Die Hard at a Hockey Game. Die Hard on a Plane. Die Hard on a Plane. Die Hard on a Plane. Die Hard on a Bus. Die Hard on Alcatraz. Die Hard on a Mountain. Die Hard with Anna Nicole Smith. Even this year, the new Channing Tatum movie, White House Down, is Die Hard in the White House. Mm -hmm. And there's another one, too, Gerard Butler. That's there's so literally funny. two Die Hard in the White House movies coming out. That's crazy. So the formula is tried and true, and it's still going, even to this day, anime. But it's always the best with Bruce Willis. It is always the best with Bruce Willis. But that's not the only reason why these movies are important. It's not just because of all the movies that the Die Hard franchise has inspired. It's also because John McClane really changed the way that we see action heroes. I mean, can you imagine what those movies would have been like if they had actually gotten Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone? Exactly, Anna. I mean, I think that's a really good point. You know, the early 80s was all about all the muscles. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger was a great example. I mean, the thing about Arnold Schwarzenegger is he's awesome, but he doesn't really seem like the rest of us, does mm -hmm. he? He's a giant muscle dude, right? Uh, he's got the accent. Uh, he's just kind of badass looking. And so this isn't a guy you went to high school with. This is a guy you know. This is a guy, there's a reason why he's always special ops and black mm -hmm. ops and movies, right? But John McClane, he's this guy that he's a pretty normal looking dude. He, he smokes, he drinks, he has issues. He's cracking jokes all the time. Mm -hmm. This is not an action hero. And that's why it was so different and so revolutionary. But the fact is, they were terrified this wasn't going to work because this had never really been done before. Mm -hmm. And it changed everything, anime. Yeah, so Die Hard really did revolutionize the way that we see action heroes. Exactly. And one more thing, anime, and this is what's really cool about the franchise. It's a very festive seasonal franchise. Mm -hmm. The first two movies take place during Christmas. Yeah. And then the fourth movie, Live Free or Die Hard, takes place during Independence Day. Yeah. So I have no idea what time period this next one's going to be about, but since it comes out Valentine's Day, I can only hope it's a special Valentine's Day, Die Hard. Die Hard for love. Oh, that's cute, anime. That's what, that was probably the alternate title. Yeah. So now you're all ready for a good day to die hard. It's a good day to die hard! Thanks so much for watching us, guys. Make sure to watch us next Wednesday with a new episode of Geek World Radio. If you want to listen to our radio show, it's on every week on Indie 100 and The Point. If you want to get in touch with us, send us an email to geekworldradio at yahoo.com and be sure to check out our website, geekworldradio.com. All right. yippee ki -yay. Bye! Well, now it's time to meet with Anne. There is
some slow days, safe to say, we'll have some fun today on Geek World Radio.